Some numbers have units on them. By units, we mean a unit of measurement. This 20 feet, this is a length, and this length is measured in feet. Length could be measured in inches or meters or miles, but in this particular case, it's measured in feet. And if we're multiplying a number that has units, we have to deal with the units. We can't ignore them. And typically, they remain in the answer. If I have 20 feet times 3, well, I multiply the numbers 20 times 3, and I get 60. But the units there is still around. It stays. So I have 60 feet for my answer. You always have to take into account the units whenever you're doing the math. And a lot of times, especially in, um, in science and engineering, you end up with numbers that are units, that have units on them because you have measured values. In math class, you're often working with pure numbers. But when you go and you apply the math in any kind of practical application or any kind of scientific setting, uh, you'll often have numbers with units. And they have to be dealt with mathematically as well. And when you're multiplying numbers, the units remain. In this case, we have 8 chairs times 7. So this might represent a row of 8 chairs, and we have 7 rows. And 8 times 7 is 56. And the unit there, chairs, remains. So we have a total of 56 chairs. And the point right now is that you shouldn't leave the unit off of your answer. When you write this, don't just write 56 for your answer. Put 56 chairs, because that is, in fact, the correct answer.